the top of my game. Ain't no stopping my play. And I do this every time, every single month, every single day. Major play in every way. Better get up on my ways. Think I feel how they feel, but don't got nothing to say. Everything is mine for the taking. Got a plan and I know I'm here to make it. Look at me, it's a star in the making. I ain't faking. What do you know? I'm the star in the show. Oh, thank you for joining us for the very special Denver 7 Post Game Show tonight. I'm Shannon Ogden. I'm Andrew Hill. We are excited. Your Denver Nuggets finishing game four strong in Miami tonight. They now have a commanding three to one lead over the Heat. And we have team coverage at Kaseya Center in Miami and here in Ball Arena in Denver. We're going to begin in Miami with Denver 7's Jessica Porter. Jess. The arena is still erupting this evening. There is a whole lot of Denver Nuggets fans still here. Not a lot of Miami Heat jerseys that you're seeing. Take a look at the crowd right next to me. They are so excited. That is a lot of Nuggets Nation right there. A lot of those folks are actually friends and family of the players. And there is just a ton of people here in their arena. What started off as a lead early on in the game for the Nuggets, they held on to it. There was a little bit of tension when Nikola Jokic got his fifth foul, but they managed to hold on to that lead and widen it, and they brought home another win for Game 4. Now we're all excited to head back home to Denver for Game 5. Let's send it over to Denver 7's Lionel Bienvenu. He is live back in the studio. Lionel, what an end to that game. Yeah, the Nuggets come through. They win it 108 to 95. We'll take a look at the highlights in just a minute. But right now it's time to get Malone's mindset. Hear what the head coach is thinking after game four tonight. Malone's mindset is sponsored by Metropolitan State University of Denver. So let's get live to the Kaseya Center and hear from the Nuggets head coach. I can say not just tonight, Mike, but throughout these playoffs, however many games we've played now, the, the non-Nicola minutes have gone really well. And we called a timeout. We ran a play ATO. Jamal knocks it down. Really well executed. And then that unit that was out there, you know, Jamal, Bruce, Jeff, Aaron, and then, you know, uh, KCP or Christian, they defended. I mean, the, the fourth quarter, we held that team to 22 points, 39 from the field. We outscored them in the second half, I think, 53 to 44. Uh, and then Bruce Brown in the fourth quarter was amazing. You know, he had, I think, 21 points. 11 of those were in the fourth quarter. They were giving Jamal so much attention that let's get Jamal off the ball, let Bruce make some plays. He was aggressive, got to the basket, made shots, and, uh, and tonight was an impressive performance. I thought Aaron Gordon was huge all night long, man. He, he brought his hard hat tonight and was just a warrior on both ends for us. Nicola, you know, he had another great game. And one of the best stats of the night, Mike, was – Jamal Murray had 12 assists, no turnovers. In a game where he was getting blitzed and bodies thrown at him all night long, did not have one turnover, and that's just remarkable. So truly a team win. Um, we're not satisfied. We're going home. We know we have a, uh, a lot of work to do, and we're going to take it one quarter at a time. Vinny in the second row. Michael, Aaron in that second quarter, it seemed like your offense was a little stuck in the mud, and Aaron scored, I think, 15 of his in the second quarter. How important was that stretch in the second quarter and, and then just his, his impact overall with six assists as well? Yeah, I mean, to your point, I mean, 27 points, six rebounds, six assists, making threes, getting to the foul line, guarding at a high level. Uh, Aaron did it all for us tonight. He really did. And, uh, you know, we've seen that now in four games in the finals where Aaron has had moments where he, he, he has carried us offensively. He made threes tonight, obviously, which is always a good thing, but um, I couldn't be more proud of Aaron Gordon and his impact across the board tonight. Arash, next row. Coach, you talked before the game that tonight was must win. Now with the opportunity to close it out, what's the message going to be to the guys over the next couple of days? Yeah, just understand that we haven't done anything. You know, I, I told the guys the first thing I said, we're not celebrating. It's a good win. We've done our job, but we're not celebrating like we've done anything yet. Uh, we know we're going to have to go home and uh, turn off the, the, the TV, the radio, don't read the papers, don't listen to everybody telling you how great you are because we haven't done a damn thing yet. We have to win another game to be world champions. And we're going to do that by simply taking it one quarter at a time. And uh, we stay true to our identity. We'll give ourselves a great chance to do that. Ohm, third row. Ohm Young, ESPN. Michael, now you talked about how this was a team effort, especially when Nicola went out. But 
you've spent much of this season having Jamal kind of, you know, run the second team at times. I know you couldn't have thought ahead of, like, this was a moment where you wanted to prepare Jamal for this. But what did Jamal show you kind of running that unit when he was out there to put you guys one win away from a championship? Well, I think Jamal, regardless of uh, what's going on, he's going to step up. He's going to find a way to impact the game. And the most impressive thing for me, Ohm, was, um, you know, he had 15 points tonight. And he was, you know, 5 of 17 from the field. But 12 assists only and zero turnovers. And just kind of, all right, they're putting two on me. Let me make the right play. He did not get bored with making the right play. He did not say, no, I'm going to save us and make – try to carry the team. We just read the defense, made the right play, and trusted. And that's a big part of our culture is trusting one another. And I, I thought Jamal's trusting his teammates tonight uh, was just at such a high level. And uh, you know, really proud of his performance. And again, it wasn't just Nicola and Jamal. Like We're getting really, really big contributions from a lot of players. The last thing I'll say, man, like I, I think that's two games in a row. And even the first game that we won, like our defense has been playing at a high level. I got to give our guys so much credit for being locked in, being disciplined. Uh, that's three wins now where our defense has held them under 100 points. And, uh, and the three-point line, once again, was a huge part of that. Only eight made threes for them tonight. And um, our guys are locked in, man. We're focused. Yeah, you are, Coach Michael Malone. That was Malone's mindset. Head coach Michael Malone and his thoughts after Game 4 of the NBA Finals, sponsored by Metropolitan State University of Denver. And what can you say? You heard him say it. The team's not celebrating. They haven't done anything yet. But I think Nuggets Nation is celebrating a little bit tonight because in NBA Finals history, teams with a 3-1 series lead went on to win the series 35 out of 36 times, a 97% success rate. So the Nuggets have a chance to close it out on Monday night. Right now, let's take a look at the highlights, shall we? It was a struggle. The Heat was desperately seeking to win. And uh, this was a little bit crazy. A flop <laughs> by Bam Adebayo. Actually, that was um, Nikola Jokic twisting his ankle, and he went out of the game for a while, but he came back, and, well, he was dialing long distance, a three-pointer from about 30 feet. Then Jamal Murray, a great pass to Michael Porter Jr., one of his 12 assists for Jamal. Nuggets by five. Then another beautiful pass from KCP to Aaron Gordon. Gordon had 16 in the first half. The Nuggets up by four at the break. Third quarter. Joker and Jamal with a two-man game, and Joker was still knocking him down from distance. He's a little bit open. 70 to 61, and then the assists. Joker to Gordon for the jam. Joker became the first player in history with 500 points, 250 rebounds, and 100 assists in a single playoffs. But here's that uh, Bam Adebayo flop I was talking about. That was Joker's fifth foul. The refs were terrible. He had to leave the game on that one. But the Nuggets held on. We got a fast break. It's AG to Jamal to Bruce Brown for the lay-in. Uncle Brucey had 21. The Nuggets by nine. Then about two minutes ago, the Nuggets passing it around. And KCP, the dagger. A three-pointer for Kenny Pope. And the Nuggets go on to win it by the final of 108 to 95. All right, let's go live to Miami and sports anchor Nick Rothschild at the Kaseya Center. And Nick, uh, Joker with 23. Jamal with 15 points, 12 assists. Um, and here comes Aaron Gordon and Bruce Brown to the rescue. The definition of a team. Anybody can get it done on any given night. Yeah, you know, Aaron Gordon, when he's not sick, he's an extremely good basketball player, right? In game one, he was dominant in the paint in the first quarter, led to the Nuggets victory. Tonight, again, dominant throughout the game. We're getting a chance from the crowd as Nuggets players are filtering to see their family and whatnot. Um, Scott Hastings has taken his shirt off to cheer, uh, cheer along with Nuggets fans over here. It's a pretty wild scene among the Nuggets faithful. But uh, back to the game, Aaron Gordon, yes, he was the dominant force outside of Jokic and Murray. Um, Bruce Brown had a couple of great shots. But your point about them doing all that with Nikola Jokic on the sideline, both with the ankle injury and the – five fouls in the fourth quarter that was the most impressive thing to me this Nuggets team played against the Heat like they were their little brother and they were holding them at arm's length throughout that fourth quarter even without their best player on the floor whenever the Heat would make a minor run Jimmy Butler was terrific they would just make the play to extend that lead back to seven or eight points and it never really felt in jeopardy in that fourth quarter so Lionel I thought there was a bad omen pregame when the button on my suit came off and I 
had to go unbutton for the rest of the game. That really wasn't the true omen for this game. The true omen was uh, in the third quarter when Conor McGregor knocked out Bernie out at half court. That seemed to be the death blow for both the Heat mascot and the Heat now as we head back to Denver with the Nuggets up 3-1. Back to you. You don't bring a portable sewing kit with you on the road, Nick? I'm going to have to teach the kids some things here. Uh, yeah, and um, we, thankfully we didn't get to see Scott Hastings with no shirt on. Thank you for not showing that live on the air. All right, let's get back to Jessica Porter now with more live at the Kaseya Center. Jessica, you showed those Nuggets fans. They're celebrating here and celebrating in Miami as well. Yeah, I just uh, passed off the sewing kit, Lionel. There are a ton of fans here in the arena just celebrating. They are extraordinarily excited over this win. Well, right now we have Bruce Brown speaking from the locker room. Let's go ahead and listen in. But uh, it, it put a chip on my shoulder. Um, so I just got a gym and work. Um, and now it's showing it in the, on the biggest stage. Dan, fourth row on the right. Bruce, Dan Devine, Yahoo Sports. Um, you know, she spent a lot of time in that second unit with Aaron Gordon, uh, playing that five, that small ball five, doing a lot of different roles for you. 27 points tonight. What did you see out of him and his performance in the big stage tonight? Yeah, AG was just being extremely aggressive. Um, they were switching a, a smaller defender on him, or in transition, they had, he had a smaller defender on him. And every time we want him to be aggressive, um, he'll make plays for us, he'll make the right play every time. Uh, and tonight was his time to score, and he was hitting three, so that was, was huge for us. All the way in the center, fifth row. Ryan Blackburn, Mile High Sports. Uh, Bruce, I, right at the end of the game, you had the ball in an isolation situation and hit the ball up three. Just wanted to know, uh, right, right here, uh, just want to know, like, that's been a part of your game that you haven't been able to show hmm. as much, but how does it feel show it in the NBA Finals now? Yeah, um, so I've seen, I was just reading the defense, um, Jimmy Schrank. A uh, strong side corner. Um, so if I drove, it was going to be a, a tough shot, um, and the shot clock was already low. Um, but yeah, that was just that's just been my go-to move if I want to show off the dribble my whole life. Um, so once I seen him back up a little bit, I went for it. Back middle, Alex Toledo, Five Reasons Sports. Uh, Bruce, was there an emphasis to kind of run the Heat shooters off the line, and more importantly, stay home and not help so much on Jimmy's drives? Yeah. Um, they shoot the ball extremely well, especially Duncan, Struess, uh, Gabe, K uh, Love, and K Lo. Um, so, really, just uh, try to uh, uh, fan out when uh, Jimmy's under the basket, uh, but still give help. Um, but yeah, try to get them off the line. Jason on the left side in the front. Uh, Bruce, Shane Allen, Ford Sports. Uh, it seems like you guys have really mastered the cutting around the Jamal and Nikola two man game. Is that something that, or I guess, how critical has that been for you guys? And that's something that uh, the coaching staff has really kind of harped on in this series. Yeah, I mean, uh, if they're going to send two to Jamal and then leave Yoke open in the pocket, somebody has to step up. Um, so basically, it's a three on two. Uh, so someone's going to be open. And, uh, and usually, since we have great shooters on this team, it's someone under the basket. Uh, so we just try to capitalize. Next row back. An incredible night for Bruce Brown with 21 points, an integral part of tonight's win. Let's go out to Denver 7's Russell Haythorn. I know if fans are allowed in here, they're probably ready to party tonight in Miami, Russell. Jessica, ready to party. We're live inside the Kaseya Center, and check out what I found. Nuggets Nation inside the Kaseya Center. This is Jeff from Colorado Springs. Jeff, you said you said you started watching in the Kiki Vandaway era. Yeah, and actually back in the 70s. And huge Nugget fan I was at game two in Denver. This was awesome tonight. Absolutely awesome. Marvin, Marvin from Kentucky, you came in for the game too. And uh, talk about Aaron Gordon's performance tonight. High scorer on the Nuggets. Aaron Gordon, when he was hitting those threes at the beginning, I was worried, but yeah, let's go Nuggets. How special was this for you guys? Oh, I tell you what, they just took control and hung on. It was really just a great effort. Jessica, how special was that for you to be in there? Jessica flew in from Commerce City with her mom and dad. It was amazing. I'm so blessed to be here. It was an awesome opportunity. I'm ready for game five. Let's go, game five. Fel Felicia from Denver, I got it right. Felicia, what about that game? Tell, tell us how you feel about it. That game was fun as F. 
That's how I feel. <laughs> it was it was amazing. Larry, Larry from Virginia, come over here. How how was the game? And t tell me, I don't know. Give me your highlight reel. Hey, it was great team ball. We've been waiting for a long time for this. One more game. One more, baby. All right, so Jessica, you're going to lead us in a cheer. Get out here. What are we cheering? Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring I don't know what to say. This is the most amazing thing I've ever been a part of. Nuggets Nation inside the Kaseya Center. I kind of feel bad for Heat fans, but not very bad. Um, we'll toss it back to you guys. An amazing crew here representing Nuggets Nation. Thank you, Russell. I love the energy out there. Two wins on the road. I know a lot of fans are hoping that they end it back at home at Ball Arena. Let's go to Denver 7's Daniel Kreuter, who is live at Ball Arena at the watch party. Danielle, how are fans feeling out there tonight? Oh my gosh, Jessica, it sounds very fun where you and Russell are, don't get me wrong, but it was a sold out crowd at Ball Arena for the watch party. One of the people watching in the stands is my friend Donovan. Yes, yes, Moved yes. to Denver more than 10 years ago. Yes. Automatic Nuggets fan since then. Absolutely. I came from Kansas City and Kansas City did not have a basketball team, so I got to come to Denver and claim the Nuggets as my home team. What did you think of the game? I mean, I thought the game was Nuggets basketball. I'm not going to lie. I got a little worried when Jokic rolled the ankle, but I think the Nuggets played their game. They played solid defense. And at the end of the day, we showed the world that Nuggets are the number one team and they got to talk about it. So we're going to spoon feed it to them. I know. Well, especially that uh, fourth quarter, it almost feels like the ankle and all the fouls. It's hard to even remember that because they did such a good job closing this. Explain a little bit the energy in Ball Arena when that was happening. Yo, the energy here, I mean, I, granted, this was not a game. This was a watch party, but the game was, the energy was so crazy. You would have thought that the Nuggets were playing here on the court, the way it was loud, the way it was going, the energy, the chance everything i mean this is nuggets basketball this is colorado this is denver we are a championship town take note world yeah and you know i like to say this may just be the last watch party at ball arena with the nuggets coming back for game five on monday nuggets in five you heard me say it i said it at halftime i'm saying it now nuggets, nuggets in five in monday night monday night nuggets it's a wrap donovan thank you so yes, much sir. we're having a lot of fun here at ball arena jessica we'll send it back to you in miami Danielle, thank you. I know that Nuggets fans are excited tonight and the team is earning that respect that they deserve game by game. Well, Nuggets fans, we want to hear from you tonight. Sound off. You can call the Denver 7 Nuggets hotline. That number is 303-832-0111. And we heard from many of you and Denver 7 viewers are so proud of our team. And what I see in the Denver Nuggets is a superstar, players with an extremely high level of talent and skill, a will to win, and most of all, very high character and unselfishness from all the players. This is Jedediah, and I'm calling from my house. And I really liked how Aaron Gordon played and Nikola Jokic. And go Nuggets! Go Nuggets. All right, let's go to Jamal Murray. He's speaking right now. Let's listen in. Mike right here. Mike Singer, Denver Post. Jamal, can you describe what the mentality it takes um, when you guys are, are able to thrive in the fourth quarter when Joker gets into foul trouble and goes to the bench and why that didn't phase you? We're just ready to win a championship. Uh, we have the tools to do it. We've been, uh, it's been on our minds for a while, so um, we're just locked in. I don't think it's, any, I don't think you got to overthink it. We're just, Dialed in, ready to win. Dan over here on the right. Dan Devine, Yahoo Sports. Just thinking back a couple of years when you guys made the deal to bring in Aaron Gordon, what did you think you were getting in Aaron at that time and a game like tonight? What is it the reality matched up to what you thought? I mean, that's, that's, that's why we got him. That's why we got him. He's a, he's a dog. He's uh, strong. He's physical. He's tough. He's chill. He brings everybody together off the court. And he's a, he's a selfless player and um, 
he's been solid this whole um, this whole playoffs, this whole season, the whole time he's been here. He's been he's been great. Um, he just wants to win. We all want to win. I think we're all uh, helping each other try to accomplish our goals. Standing on the left. It was a team effort tonight, and Jamal Murray held it down. Well, we have much more live team coverage, and of course, we're still waiting to see if we hear from Nikola Jokic. We'll be right back.